You think we're in the clear and then we move the soil around and the patch goes everywhere. It would be our ideal god tier level of <laughs> reptile owning. Like only if you knew because that way like, you'd be so embarrassed if we knew you were like oh. blessed and like don't be embarrassed. <laughs> So it would definitely not be something we'd be handling alone or ever getting out with fear, but when the other one isn't there. Yeah. Can yes. you hear this one? Like, that's not saying Can you yes. hear this one? That's Hi guys, welcome to or welcome back to our channel. So for today's video, we thought we'd do a Q&A. So we asked on our Instagram, if you want to follow us and be involved in these type of videos, make sure to click the link down below and go follow us and see some Cuba suit. What? <laughs> and so you can see some super cute pictures of our animals so We've also just started our new theme, which we're really loving. So if you want to check that out, make sure you go and check out our page too. So the first question we've got is which animal is the most difficult to care for? And if we're talking individually, I'd say Diego, which yeah, is a Chinese water dragon, because they're pain to keep the humidity up high, water changes, everything to do with Yeah, Chinese water Diego. dragons are not the easiest pet. And this is kind of known anyway, but I think people are getting to a point where they do think they are a little bit easier than they actually are. When you add up the water changes, changing the vivariums over time, because they do need a large space to climb around in. And yeah, it's just not the easiest <laughs> ride with them, basically. But then if you count into it numbers of animals, then it'll be the snails. The snails, 100%. 100%. <laughs> oh my god. The amount of eggs we have to yeah. pick, they just like eggs constantly, and we have... 19 african land snails which apparently ours that like live with us <laughs> we do have more that are about to be shipped off to a couple of new homes so we do have kind of around 30 35 ish somewhere Currently. between the two now so obviously that takes a while they need fresh fruit and veggies every day and it's not you make a mess constantly if you want an african land snail care video yeah they're super easy <laughs> when you don't have many but when you have as many as we do, it can get very difficult. And hard to keep on top of. <laughs> yeah. Especially with the eggs, sometimes they lay them in the middle of the soil. So when you root them around, because we check the bottom, just to see if we can see any patches of eggs. <laughs> and if you can't see them, it's like, okay, we think we're in the clear. And then we move the soil around and the patch goes everywhere. And there's tiny little eggs all over the, the enclosure. thing. Oh, I can't even. So the next question we have is if we have any living plants in our enclosures, and currently we don't. We've looked into this a lot though and this is definitely something we're going to be interested in in the future. Yeah, there's a couple of specific animals which we are really looking into and really want to get done kind of soon so keep your eye out for that because we might make some bioactive enclosure videos. Yeah, we'll 100% film that and very little things like isopods and stuff like that even though Holly is terrified of them. Yeah, I can't I do like the <laughs> small creepy, you know what? I can do like worms and everything else. It's things that are, like little with legs that can like run at me. Like They're locusts, cute. no, dubias, no, you know, honestly, I've been able to start feeding them recently, which is, yeah, so isopods are, you'll get used to them, you'll get used to them. So the next question we have is, would you ever end ball python at some point? A hundred percent, we love ball pythons so much, and most types of snakes. Yeah, when we move out, because we're not allowed to currently own any more exotics, but when we move out, we ball we'll pythons are probably going to be one of our... <laughs> There's just so many different morphs and yeah. such pretty snakes. Oh There's so, God. so many and we can't even choose a favourite ever. I know on our animal account, sometimes for a question of the day, people will be like, what's your favourite morph? And we're like, yeah, even to get like a top no three or five. It's too hard. It's too hard. Like they're insane. And you know how many morphs there is? Like to pick like one or two, how people have like a favourite morph <laughs> is like beyond me because like there's so many. Yeah. And we also really want to look into breeding at ball pythons, which goes into our next question is what's your long-term reptile goal? There's kind of a few goals with this, but breeding snakes would be our ideal god tier level of <laughs> reptile owning. We really want to breed snakes and yeah. different morphs and just own a bunch of different snakes, really. Yeah, and we also do want to be able to open like a reptile exotic shop, which is one of our goals also. And if we're breeding ball pythons, we can sell them through yeah. our shop instead of getting them through like a dealer. A dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'd rather breed them ourselves and sell them through our shop versus getting them from a supplier, which most reptile shops tend to do. So the next question we have is what started your interest in keeping slash working with reptiles and inverts? And for me, this is a bit more straightforward than for Holly <laughs> because since I was younger, I've just always been obsessed with little creepy crawlies and even when I was very, very young, I'd always be the kid who was picking, not even picking them because I always wanted to be nice. I'd never want to trap them. Yeah. I'd, or even then, I was like, 
<laughs> in school and everything if there was like a spider in the class or like a little worm on the ground and everyone's getting freaked out i'd be like he's so cute i want to take him home with me and my mom was always supportive of this and she was always like show me new insects and this or the other and she was never scared of anything so i was like why do i need yeah, to be scared yeah she's literally not scared of anything even though she hasn't yeah. like handled like say for example when we went to west and she's literally just go like straight in and even yeah. he's in the bad mood like he's not she's not bothered she's not scared of it so i was taught that why should i be scared of little creepy crawlies so i was always even it went into high school and ever since if there's a moth on the loose if there's a spider <sighs> if there's anything i'm always the one who gets them yeah very much <laughs> for me it basically started the only like, mammal stuff when i was younger and obviously i say obviously not all families do but i always <laughs> had cats growing up and i absolutely adore cats so we both adore God, cats. God, yeah, animal. We're allergic to them. So Small cats, little cats. Yeah. She's allergic to cats, which... We're both cat people, though. Of course. She's like <laughs> one of my favourite animals. She's allergic, though. But I always had cats. And then I started with hamsters. And I was on, like, that. It's not, like, pet... Is it still pet tubers? I started watching, like, hamster pet yeah, tubers. Yeah. So I really got into that side of it. And then... From... It's still pet tubers. Hamsters yeah, it's still a... pets. Are you crazy? <laughs> oh, yeah. But, like, I don't know. <laughs> But I started watching pet tubers on the like mammal side with hamsters and then I suddenly went on to my reptiles and exotic YouTubers who had like snakes yeah. and lizards and yeah. you guys ten should probably know the yeah, yeah. YouTubers but See growing up I also had a tortoise and a snake in yeah. between mammals and stuff. So I was since I was like seven or eight or something, I'd been used to owning reptiles and then it obviously went on to okay, what's this? What's that? Inver? Yeah, I had no reptiles like, growing up. My mum and dad both hate them. They like can't stand them. They get terrified. My dad has never seen our snake. Like he can't deal with mm -hmm. it. He hates them. Even like sending pictures, he gets like scared of them. Mum's more scared of the feed in my side and like the fact that like they eat and like I don't know. It's I also used to have an ant farm when I was younger. Do you actually remember them? Yeah. Speaking of ant farms, someone from the animal community who we follow on Instagram has just got an ant farm. Oh my god, so I'm cute. so jealous. That pure brought it back to my childhood. I completely so cute. forgot about this i used to have one of them ant farms that had like little balls in it and i used to love like feeding them and it was the best you will see them like carry little leaves around that's too mm, big so cute them, but they can do it i used to it's love like... ants when i was younger that was yeah. like <laughs> go to so the next question is what's one reptile that we'd never own and we've talked about this before but we can never actually think of one animal there's some that we'd be more cautious with a lot of people naturally are like oh i've never owned anything poisonous or venomous but personally like we love yeah. to own more venomous and like dangerous if you will species but obviously we just go into that with a lot more caution we'd need a bigger setup than we have now we'd need more money to be able to invest yeah. in certain enclosures and stuff like that so i wouldn't say we'd never own it because we would own rattlesnakes. Them, I but... absolutely love rattlesnakes. Oh. Sebastian thinks he's a rattlesnake. Yeah, Sebastian likes thinks he's a rattlesnake when he gets angry. <laughs> like, it's cute. Like, bless him. Only if he knew that, like... Because <laughs> he thinks he's purely like, going to fight us off with, like, shaking his tail when he gets a bit defensive. He's so cute. Like, only if he knew. Because that way, like, he'd be so embarrassed if he knew we were, like, oh. bless him. Like, he's a rattlesnake. <laughs> but I genuinely can't think of one reptile that I would think... Mm, no. Yeah. Exotics overall, maybe. I don't like yeah, millipedes you were, or centipedes. Yeah, you don't want a millipede or a centipede or a scorpion. Yeah, millipedes, centipedes I and scorpions. I love them. For me. I love them. Mm. I want them so much. Certain types of scorpions are like, oh my god, they are so I can't pretty. do them. They maybe scorpions so over millipedes. No, that's not saying Can yes. you hear this one, no, That's not saying Can you yes. hear this one? That's saying millipedes and centipedes get me more because like, it's a small, They're creepy, so crawly cool. kind of thing. They are so cool. Certain videos, just watching them. And like, how they're natural. It's so cool. So the next question we've got is any new animals planned? Yes, <laughs> always. <laughs> so our next animal that we're looking to get is a Caribbean vertical lamp, which is one of our favourite types of tarantulas literally ever. Yeah, we've been saying it for so long, then obviously everything happened, but we are definitely looking into it on them. Awesome. Very shortly. <laughs> and also we've been looking a lot into prey mantises lately because these are super cute. It's such a cool species to own as well and watching them the way they feed, the way they just They're move so cute. <laughs> I love like how they move the little arms. It's it's so adorable. cute. They're adorable. They kind of, I know this might sound weird, but they remind me of like mini chameleons. The way they move. Yeah. You get me? And, like have little like boxing gloves on. Yeah, they're so cute. And so we're looking into both of these at the minute. Well, we've looked into a Caribbean of Escola thoroughly. So we're ready yeah. for that. But <laughs> reptile wise, it'd probably be a leopard gecko or ball python. Probably more a leopard gecko because once we've 
moved out. Obviously, we said we can't get any more animals until we have moved out. Yeah, we do not have but a space for them all right now. <laughs> it would probably more likely be a leopard gecko because once we got a ball python, we probably want to get a pair and, and start breeding. breeding. Basically, when we move out, as soon, well, we won't have the money the second we move out, sadly. <laughs> but <laughs> we have like the money, the space, yeah. the facilities to breed. We really want to get crack yeah. on that as soon as we possibly could. So it'll probably be a leopard gecko and then we'll get a ball python, possibly as a pair, at least kind of close together. Yeah. So the next question we honestly really like because it's, would you ever own a large snake? Yes. <laughs> we love large snakes. We just can't get any right now. But yeah, we always, when we buy snakes, tend to, we'd want to go for more females to males <laughs> because we want them bigger. But if we're talking large snakes that are like genetically larger, yeah. we really want a better constrictor. So yeah. bad. And certain, certain types of pythons we really, really want, like reticulated pythons. It's insane. It's crazy that the how big they can go. Yeah, like how? Like, I like can't comprehend it. Like you could probably eat me insane. if you wanted to. Like what? A hundred percent. Like when they get to a certain size, it can just swallow your whole. So it would definitely not be something we'd be handling alone <laughs> or ever getting out of its bib when the other one isn't there. So the next question isn't animal related, but it's how do you guys meet? So we actually met at sixth form. So for anyone who's not in the UK, we were, how old are we? Like 16, 17? Six. Yeah, we just turned 17. 17. Yeah, so. You were still 16? Yeah. I just turned 17 and you were I'm 16. still 16. It was like a couple of months between us. So I was still 16, but we met in sixth form. And we have a whole other channel that you guys will probably be aware yeah, of. Yeah, like a whole story channel on there. So. But yeah, we talked about it in a lot more depth there. But yeah, we met in school. <laughs> also, if it isn't obvious, we're together. Yeah. Oh, we're yeah. Like, this is my girlfriend. <laughs> I am her girlfriend. I just hope it'll be obvious, but I feel like it might not be. <laughs> yeah, in case it's not. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so for our final question, it's what's one thing you wish you would have known before owning reptiles? And this I'm is hard. not too sure because I feel like we did go into it with a lot of research. So we were prepared for a couple of different avenues. I'd want to say how much time and effort it takes and... You kind of realise that with research, but until you're doing it... You don't feel the effects of it until yeah. you experience like it. Especially when you've got multiple animals, yeah. like exotics. It really, like how much it takes daily, you didn't actually realise until yeah. you've got them. <laughs> yeah, like you realise you're going to need like daily commitment for this or the other, but to the extent that it can be, and I suppose that does come with what animals you own, how many you own, but feeling the of even something small such as water changes... It yeah. seems like it's easy, okay? You just like small. Right down the but street. have you seen Diego's water? <laughs> yeah, well, a tiny small dragon. He has a very large area of water, so that obviously isn't as simple as just pouring a dish down the toilet, the sink, or whatever, and refilling it. But when you feel the effects, if you have a couple of them, especially when they do have more larger water containers, and if a couple of them are being picky on the same day, and you have to sit with multiple of them obviously not together but like a separate time yeah. period you don't realize until like or even if you think oh it's just like an hour of the day it's a lot i mean i guess one thing that i did know and i was very well aware of which is why i started breeding insects very shortly after the first lizard was bought i guess but the amount of insects you go through and therefore costs yeah so at this point we have a very <laughs> kind of large for the current situation breeding facility <laughs> for our insects yeah and you just go through them so, so often. I even like how many bulbs break Yeah. constantly. And uh, what bulbs you buy or how good your bulbs are, they're always going to break or one out. Or you need to change your UV bulbs, even if they don't take them like one out and like yeah. the light's still working. Yeah, you change, change them regularly. Like it's things you know through research, but then you don't really realise until it starts to build up. Yeah. Like it's like, oh, there's one more lizard. Oh, there's one more snake. Just one more tarantula. Just one more this. And then... Recently, we started looking at our animal bills and we're like, oh, <laughs> As if my we God. actually pay that each week and month. <laughs> like, you don't realise when it's just, like, an extra five pound for, like, a diff an extra ball when you've got, like, an extra animal. And then you start, like, these animals start building up and then it's like, this is a lot of money. <laughs> so, they're all the questions we have for you today. And we hope you enjoyed this video, which is honestly kind of enjoyable because we like answering questions like these. Yeah, I really enjoyed doing this video. It's just a bit more chilled and laid back and not as, like, put yeah. together because for this chat. <laughs> Because with this channel, obviously a lot of the videos are more informative, so we have to like get our facts and everything ready and just make sure everything's right and kind of yeah. plan it out a bit more, if you will, than the average video. But this is like a sit yeah. down talking video. I like it on this channel because I feel like you don't get as much personality on this yeah, channel. 100% not. I feel like unless you watch the two channels together, you don't actually realise what 
kind of person that I think we both have and collectively. Yeah. So if you enjoyed this kind of video, make sure to leave a like down below and maybe even a comment if you have any other questions, we'll be sure to answer Yeah, we'll them. answer a couple of your comments down below if you have any more. Also, if you want to find us anywhere else, our link tree is down below, which has all of our Instagrams, <laughs> our TikToks, our other YouTube channels, which is also... Yeah, we have better. another YouTube channel, we have two TikToks, we have a couple of Instagrams. We have like three Instagrams. <laughs> We also post on them a lot more regularly as well. So if you want to see more from us, that's 100%. Especially TikTok and our animal Instagram. Yeah. They're the main places we post. <laughs> obviously, if you want to say, as we said before, we started a new theme. And we have all these like, cute pictures of our animals. So go check yeah, that out. We're obsessed with it. It's so <laughs> cute. <laughs> and if you want to be notified the next time we post, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button below. So yeah, thank you for watching. And we'll hopefully see you next time. Bye. Bye.